So I have come out to this old, absolutely massive dolmen to photograph the Milky Way. And I'm going to do it a little bit different compared to my other photography, where I usually do not use artificial light. Tonight I'm going to use light painting, the light painting technique, to light up the dolmen somehow and the stone circle here around me. I don't think that I can have the entire stone circle within the frame and also have the Milky Way and make a proper composition. So the plan is basically just to use parts of the stone circle here around the dolmen as some kind of foreground or leading element leading into a middle ground, which is the dolmen and then the background, the Milky Way. But right now I will try to find myself a good composition. This dolmen is the largest of its kind in Denmark and is about 5,300 years old, which is so fascinating to think about. So right now I put on the 12 to 24 millimeter simply just to have a much wider angle of view to work with. The dolmen here in the middle ground will be a tad bit smaller. It will be very much smaller compared to whatever I put in the foreground, but I think it is worth it compromising the size of the dolmen because it is mainly the Milky Way and like the entire setup here that I'm interested in using as a foreground, not necessarily show how big the dolmen is. I know that the Milky Way is going to stand somewhat over here about 10 p.m. when it is going to be dark enough for me to photograph it before 10 p.m. when it's all dark, I'm probably going to go around and do some light painting of these stones here. But as it stands right now, I'm basically just trying to find the most optimal composition. With the dolmen this old, I found it quite obvious to complement it with the Milky Way. So when you're doing a light painted photo, it is a great idea to have a kind of base image, a color neutral image without any kind of light on it. And I found that now. The only issue is that when you are making this base image, you have locked down your composition for the rest of the night. Like right now, I should not move the camera anymore. I have taken the photo at f16, 30 seconds, while there was enough light for me to get the entire foreground in focus. And I will just keep it at f16 and 30 second exposures. So when it is dark enough, I will start to run into the scene. And within those 30 seconds, I will start to light up different parts of that scene. And I will do that over 5 to 10, maybe 15 different photos where I light up different parts of the stone circle and the dolmen. Tonight I do have the one thing against me that it is a little bit windy. The wind is supposed to die down, but it can be a problem at the very least that there is a little bit of wind and I will have to keep the camera in this setup for the next one and a half, two hours until the Milky Way comes forward. Another reason for having this base image is that over there I have a house with light in it. I have a house right here that will probably also light up later in the evening. So I will most likely have quite a lot of color cast or light cast from those buildings. So it is good to be able to control my light by having a base image with no light pollution on it, clean ISO 100 image, and then I can just slowly paint in the light painted photos afterwards. So the last issue I'm facing is that obviously the best composition makes sure that the Milky Way is not within the frame. <laughs> so I will have to take photos of the Milky Way separately and composite it in behind the dolmen here. It's not a problem in regard to Photoshop and all those things. And I think that if I had just been here like a month ago, it wouldn't have been an issue whatsoever because then the Milky Way would probably have been standing 
right behind the dolmen. So right now it's just a question about waiting for it to be completely dark. There's still about an hour left. So I will leave this camera here, cross my fingers that it won't move and uh, yeah, just wait. You can start to do light painting during the blue hour, which is what I did. How it turns out depends on how strong the light source is. I just use my headlamp, but even a phone, the flashlight on the phone or a real flashlight can work. You can even play around with different colors. Generally I find side light and back light to work the best for light painting and then you can fill in with a bit of front light, but make sure it is not too strong. Light painting is actually also a fascinating way of learning about light direction, intensity and purpose. Think about what parts of the scene you want to direct the viewer's attention to and decide where and how strong the light needs to be based on that. Be careful not to overexpose and clip the highlights in the parts of the scene you are lighting up as you can't recover those details in the post-processing. Personally, I prefer to take my photos where I light different parts of the scene to keep control and then mix them together in Photoshop afterwards. In the end, you also have to be a bit pragmatic and practical when you're working on your own. So I can absolutely not see where you are, but I think it's there-ish. <laughs> uh, I have now been all the way around, spent 45 minutes light painting the entire place here from yeah, basically every possible angle. You have to go back and forward quite a lot to check if you have the angles and the amount of light intensity that you think you will need. And I can recommend not trying to light paint a big location like this the first time you're going to light paint. Just uh, play around with it first in your garden before you actually come out and uh, spend an evening uh, at a place like this. Right now I basically just need to take some photos of the Milky Way and I am still quite close to Aarhus, so I do have a little bit of light coming from the town and, and disturbing the Milky Way shot. So I will drive a little bit further east and I have about half an hour before it is proper night time. That's when the sun is 18 degrees beneath the horizon and then I can get a really good Milky Way shot. So I finally found a place where I could park the car at the side of the road without falling off an edge or into a field or anything like that, where I also could see the Milky Way. Now this is a pretty good dark sky area, but I still do have quite a lot of light pollution from the horizon and uh, from, from the bigger towns over on the other side of the fjord, but uh, I would say this is pretty good. I have set up my setup, my 20mm 1.8 from Sony, brand new lens, tech sharp, fantastic to work with, at f2 or f2.2, I don't remember right now, it's, it's sharper than at f1.8, so it's just tech sharp right now, and I put it on my Star Tracker. I actually bought the Star Tracker last year, but I haven't really got around to use it before now and you probably are interested in what Star Trek I'm using and I'll write it down here below because I don't remember it right now but it works really really great and I'm making at 20 millimeter of course 30 second exposures and the stars are just tech sharp I could make longer exposures but uh, for some reason my phone won't connect with Wi-Fi to the camera so I can bulb the shots but uh, I'm just taking like 30 second exposures and I'm just taking like 16 of them and yeah I think I will call that an evening I'm pretty sure I can just stack them and they will be super clean so that's what I am waiting for now setting up the star tracker is a little bit cumbersome I found a video about it on YouTube so it is not super duper hard it is definitely not rocket science it just requires a little bit of mingling around the light pollution was a bit strong at this location but I visited another location the following night which had a much clearer sky so I ended up using that Milky Way shot instead 
I used the exact same technique to photograph it. When you have all the photos, you just do the base editing in either Camera Raw or Lightroom and import them all into Photoshop. To blend the different light painting photos together, you just stack them on top of each other and switch the blending mode to Lighten. You might very well have to go through all the layers and either delete or mask out the parts you do not need. I would highly recommend to keep the amount of photos you stack to a minimum as the file can very fast become very large. The size of my final PSD file was 8 GB, so unless you have a strong computer you may want to think a little ahead. I of course used a ton of other Photoshop techniques to edit the photo, but covering all of those will take way too much time for this video. Also, if you are interested in my editing techniques, I still have a $100 release discount on my brand new post-processing course, Photoshop for Landscape Photographers. This discount will end on Thursday, so be sure to take advantage of it. And also thank you so much to all of you who've enrolled so far. It's uh, I cannot express my gratitude. Thank you. There are links down in the description for more information. And here is the final photo. I also made a version without the Milky Way and I actually also like that one quite a lot. Two very different versions, yet most of the photo is actually the same. Let me know which one you prefer, with or without the Milky Way. As always, I would highly appreciate a like and be sure to use the discount code for my post-processing course. As I said, all the information is in the description.